My name is Brad McKinnon. I'm the Communication Coordinator for Our Lady of Guadalupe Parish here in beautiful Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And today I'm going to talk to you for about five minutes about prayer. What is prayer? Well, I'm sure when I said that word, lots of different images floated through your brains. You might have thought about the inside of a beautiful church. You might have thought about mass. You might have thought about a particular object or maybe a particular kind of prayer. But at the very heart of prayer, it's about a relationship and it's about communication. It's about our relationship with God and how we communicate with God. And I'm sure some people think that there's a, a right way to pray and a wrong way to pray. Well, the truth of the matter is, there really is a lot of right ways to pray. But there probably aren't very many wrong ways. As long as when we pray, we realize that we are God, we are not God, that God is God and we are not. And that as a prayer, we, we kind of look towards the heavens. And we, and I don't mean that fig, I mean that figuratively, not literally, but we kind of just, we stop focusing on ourselves and we begin to reflect and, and try and allow the Spirit of God to move and work through us, allow the Holy Spirit to work. And I said this really complicated way, but really, I can sum up this thought by quoting one of my favorite saints, St. Therese of Lisieux. St. Therese put it this way, For me, prayer is a surge of the heart. It is a simple look and toward, towards heaven. It is a cry of recognition and of love, embracing both trial and joy. It's a simple look towards heaven, embracing both trial and joy that God is with us, both in our good times and our bad times. And it's about developing an awareness of how God is working. I found the most useful way to do that is to spend some time each day reflecting upon the day prior and looking at, at where God is at work. St. Ignatius had this beautiful method of contemplation where he talked about desolation and consolation and, and ways that we would experience the good things in life, the things that, that, we, that were good, and the things that were bad. This process can take on many different forms, and many different thinkers have thought about this different ways over the years. I like something simple. And one of my favorite simple ways to pray was developed by Matthew Kelly from Dynamic Catholic. And it's called the prayer process. I'm going to walk through it with you. It's something that I've used daily now for a number of years, and it's really helped me in my, in my own personal journey. It has seven steps. Gratitude, awareness, significant moments, peace, freedom, others, and then we end with an Our Father. Now, Matthew Kelly has a, a really detailed way to go through this. I'm just going to go through it just kind of briefly with you. And I'll put the link in the description below this video, and you can go and try it out on your own. But I'm going to just give you a brief overview. So let's start with step one, gratitude. As we look back on our previous day, what are we grateful for? I'm sure that if we look back on any day, there is something where we can be grateful for, whether that's the, the people in our lives, whether that's shelter, food, you know, some little way that God touched your heart through the act of somebody or just being able to be, around, be there. You might have had some small great thing happen and it's just giving thanks to God for that. The second one is awareness. What has God been doing in your life? And more specifically, you know, being aware of maybe some time during the day when you were the best version of yourself. Maybe become aware of a time during the day where you were not quite the best version of yourself. You know, sometime when you were Christ-like or you allowed the Holy Spirit to work through you or sometime where maybe you didn't. And that kind of awareness allows us to become more honest with ourselves about who we are and, and can develop you know, new patterns of behavior and can get rid of some of the bad ones. Third step, now you're going to look at significant moments. What is a significant moment? Well, it could be anything. It could be something that somebody said to you. It could be an event that happened. It could be an email you got. It could be something you saw on the news or in social media. It could be something you watched on YouTube. What is that moment during the day where you know that God was speaking to you? Well, how do I become aware of that? Well, by taking a little bit of time each day. 
<laughs> and reflecting upon what God is doing and how he's saying it. And after you become aware of that significant moment, you take a moment for peace. And usually for me, that's a, just that kind of deep breath to start and just letting God enter. You know, becoming aware of God's love and his love for me. Sometimes I'll look at a crucifix when I do this, or sometimes I'll just close my eyes and take a few deep breaths and letting, letting the Holy Spirit come in me and provide me with a sense of peace. No matter how busy or how chaotic a day can get, that peace is so important. The next one is freedom. Freedom from what? Well, maybe there's a bad habit you have in your life. Maybe there's something you're trying to get over or something you're trying to get by. Maybe you've had an argument with somebody or some sort of conflict or whatever. It's asking for that freedom to forgive that person, the freedom to move away from a habit or an addiction, away from a pattern of sin in your life. Freedom is what we all seek. And peace. And these two steps together kind of give us not just peace and freedom, but they allow us to begin to move forward and to act on those significant moments that God has given us. And finally, pray for others. Maybe somebody's asked you to pray for them. Maybe there's just people in your life you've seen struggling or somebody that you, you walked past on a street corner that was asking for money or you know, somebody that you ta- interacted with who you know is, is going through a rough patch. It's about realizing that Maybe I can't fix all the world's problems, but I can pray and I can trust that my loving God, who hears everything, can be there and comfort those who are in need. And the final one is ending with a very simple prayer, probably the most perfect prayer ever given to us by Jesus. It's the Our Father. And when you go through that prayer, it asks things like, Our Father who art in heaven, your name is holy, and your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Think about all the things. It's very similar to the steps that we just took. That we're asking God for things. We're submitting to God's will. And that we're trusting that our Father who hears our prayers will respond in kind. And not that doesn't mean he gives us everything we want. But he really gives us what he needs. And sometimes what we need is just somebody to listen to us. Somebody to be with us during our, our, our times of suffering and our times of joy, St. Therese said. And that's kind of it. This is the prayer process that Matthew Kelly developed with Dynamic Catholic. There's a video link below that you can give it a try. But I really encourage you to try this kind of prayer. And kind of once a month, we're going to have one of these prayer videos. A video where hopefully we can introduce different ways to pray. And we'll have different people explain why they pray in one way or pray in another way. And hopefully over time, you can find a few different ways to pray that will, that will root your relationship with God in, in a series of habits. For me, sometimes I don't feel like praying. But when, I, when it becomes a certain time during the day, I pray this kind of prayer. And it allows me to refocus and resettle and be reminded that God is God and I am not. And that I need his love and I need his mercy in order to be the person that I want to be and be the person God is calling me to be. So that's it. Hopefully this will help you on your journey. And until next time, my name is Brad McKinnon, and I'll see you online. God bless.